What's up, guys? Welcome back. Another episode of Push Through, where JJ and I just talked about 25 things that are just driving us absolutely crazy that we need to push through that probably won't even make it into the podcast because I'm so angry about it. I don't even want to talk about it, but we'll find something more chipper and cheery to talk about today. I hope. If not, we're just going to. We're going to rant. Yeah, we'll just, yeah, we'll just vent. You can hear us <laughs> bitch and complain the whole podcast. Now the Stoics remind us to never be overheard complaining even to oneself. So I just didn't. I just did a lot of complaining though. It happens sometimes you gotta vent. I will say you are gonna no one's gonna realize what I'm talking about, but I challenge Brad to sell five things on Facebook Marketplace. And so, our in our rant we were talking about getting rid of stuff. So my wife and I are real big on like, if we don't use something for more than a few months, we get rid of it. Like we just sell it. I was like, I, I mean, our whole, all of our stuff like that we live with, with us can fit in a mid size U-Haul or smaller, probably smaller. If we sold our couch, um, we have very minimal stuff and it just feels good. It feels light. It feels like you lose weight anytime you get rid of something like that. So I'm more, of, I'm more of a get a dumpster and just throw everything away. <laughs> oh my god! I can't be, I uh, can't be bothered like posting, negotiating. Is this for sale still? Yeah, sure. Let's meet up. Oh, I can't today. Oh, I know you said fifty dollars, but will you do forty? I, I just don't have time. I don't well, know. Throw it away. I'm, uh, I, that's it. Yeah, I mean, I mean you can I'm do gonna... that too. But I see. I look at that though, as, and I see that as throwing away dollar bills. Like but why would my, you not? Why would you not go through a little bit of inconvenience just to take the money, and it all adds up? When you like, agree, though, that there's, yeah, I got to put a value on my time. It doesn't take that much time, though, dude. All of that takes so much time that I just said. Not really. I mean, you can even do porch pickups. We do that too. Like if it's stuff that's like not super expensive, and I'm like, if somebody out there just wants to take it, they take it. Like we tell them to either Venmo us or leave the cash under the doormat, and we do that a lot. See, I don't want people to come to my house. Yeah, well. We, we've put stuff for free. Like, hey, I'm throwing yeah. this out. I'm throwing this out. If you want to come grab it, come grab it. Because I knew, like, somebody would want it. But, like, I, I just don't have the emotional energy. Buy a dumpster. How's, uh, how's week one marathon training? Um, easier than expected minus the 10K. That 10K whooped my ass, dude. As you could tell, uh, I think you, t so yeah, I think you text me right after I ran it and you're like, good job, dude. PR, even though fucking Strava taxed me, it didn't even show up as the true 10 K. Cause I stopped my watch right at 6.20. Cause I was dog. I was dying. My heart rate was at 205. Yeah, dude, you need to run with a fucking defibrillator. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, why do you think that is? Like I was re I was researching that night. Like, I was asking Google questions like if your heart rate gets above 200 during intense running, is that bad? And they're like 18 to 20 year olds during intensive or uh, intense, intense, uh, intense exercise heart rate could reach levels of 190 plus. And I'm like, I'm a 32 year old out of shape, dude. Like this isn't that, good, like, but I don't you, know how much like, is concerned? that <laughs> I don't know. Should I be? I, I've always had historically had a low heart rate. See, I've always had high blood. Well, I'm not always had high blood pressure, but I've always been a very high strung individual with a higher heart rate. Do you think like the high blood? I, I don't know. I'm not a doctor. I don't know. I don't, I don't want to go into things that like are medical, but like, yeah. I, and I don't know if like, do you know like what your resting heart rate is? Uh, like 65. All right. That's, that's still pretty hot. Like, do you know what you sleep at? No, I don't wear. Was it saying sleep. you don't wear your Garmin when you sleep? No, 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 no I don't. Um, actually, I take that back. Sometimes I see on the watch it says like forty eight resting heart rate. That's good, but like, how accurate is that though? You when know. you're sleeping, it's pretty accurate because, like, the whole wrist thing is more accurate when you're not moving. It's the movement that makes it not, yeah. not that accurate. But all right, well, it was a good 10k. Yeah. So I, the, I, just, the, I see 200, and I'm like, gee, Jesus. I, I know, dude. Well, like that's probably. But I'm telling you, there's times in my runs, like 
the two the 10 mile run and the 10k remember when i told you i was feeling like a little little glossy eyed like oh shit i'm 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 redlining right now that's how i felt at that 10k run so i was like i know i'm pushing it and like i'm trying like i'm mentally telling myself like keep going keep going keep going keep going but my body's like wanting to shut down well now i know why my fucking heart rate's at 200 plus whenever it's telling me hey dude you need to slow down i'm like keep going you know but then i saw your marathon stuff and i was looking at your heart rate i'm like bro like your heart rate never went above 165 like yeah. I, I can walk and get my heart rate up to 165 the yeah, first the first, walk. first 18 miles i think i averaged like 141 okay i just I don't even know how that's ever gonna happen to me it'll get i mean mine like i said mine was never high like that yeah yeah, but for a while, it would be in like the high one sixties, maybe. But dude, like, like I think my max heart rate right now, like when I tried to get, I wanted to know what my max heart rate was, so I got on did intervals like hill intervals, and like maybe July on the treadmill, and I got it to like one eighty two, bro, and that and that was like I was gonna, I like threw up after that. No, listen, see, here's the thing though, dude, like. Does that mean then if I can truly get my heart, like I, I'm thinking about this, if I could cruise at 150 beats per minute, mm -hmm. I could run 600 miles. <laughs> I'm not lying. Like if I could get my heart rate down that low while I'm running, bro, I could go forever. That's the goal, bro. Because like if I can operate at such a high, this again, this I have no background in this. This may be, this may not mean, this may not be correct at all, but like, my thought process is if I can get my, was it aerobic? Mm -hmm. How do you say, is it aerobic training or what? Like, how would I say that in a sentence? If I can get my aerobic blank down, oh, your threshold. aerobic fitness threshold, whatever yeah. that is. If I can get that down, which that's our plan, my plan right now. Like, wouldn't you think I could operate way more efficiently running like I can't even imagine running my max effort in like that 10k, like sprinting my ass off, and my heart rate never going above like 185. Like that's like a like 185 for me is like a a nice brisk like jog. Yeah, for your marathon, I'm not gonna want your heart rate over 155. <laughs> I, I literally can bring that up walking. Got a lot of work to got a lot some, of work to do. We got some work to do. Yeah, but no, it's a good feeling, but that, but it's a double-edged sword. Like, that's kind of one of the things that hurt me. Then it just goes like you can't go by just one metric mm -hmm. because yeah, my issue and the lesson I learned yesterday was that if 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 I'm depending on just my heart rate, there's going to be other factors there. And if I'm just like, no, nah, my heart rate's good, I'm good. My heart rate's good, I'm good. My heart rate's good. those other factors and other variables are going to come back to haunt you. And then you're like, all right, so it's, you got to use it as a metric, but there has to be other variables and checklists going on through the, throughout the race or throughout the training or whatever you're doing, because coming out of summer, I'm used to my summer heart rates, which are going to be elevated because of the heat and humidity. Mm -hmm. So now that it's cooled down 30, 40 degrees, my heart rate's adjusted. And my heart rate's like, sweet, we don't need to work. But my muscles don't care like how hot or cold it is. And like my nutrition doesn't care necessarily how hot or cold it is or my hydration necessarily. So yeah, I mean, we're gonna try and get you down, but there's there's gonna be other things. And maybe you will run it high. Who knows? Yeah. But like it's you're you're gonna learn your specific heart rates and what your zones are for different things. And it'll be lower than it is now. I think you'll be shocked. I think three months is a very, very, we're going to test that like once a month for you. But I think at the three month mark is when you're really going to notice like your paces coming down at the same heart. Rate. Yeah. Cause right now I'm sitting at like 13 minutes is like my. Yeah. We'll, we'll get that down to 10 minutes. That'd be sick. By the marathon. Like, I think I think we can get you to run like 1030s, 1045s for the marathon under 155. Oh, be nice, dude. I think that's really realistic. That'd 
That'd be nice. So you yeah, got, if I could, you gotta do the work though. Yeah. Oh, I, I mean, I'm ready to do that. Yeah. Did you see my stretching video? I did. Isn't that crazy, dude? Now, come on now for the, for the real ones that listen, did you sandbag it at all or no? What's that mean? What like, mean that? like, did you, did you limit yourself for the show or did you stretch a little more for the show or was that you mean like, before the before, before shot before or after? Oh no. I mean, br- dude, the before shot as I, I've never done hip mobility in my life. Right. I didn't know there was hip mobility. Like I'm learning so much in this running. So shit. like when you made that first video, however long ago it was, mm-hmm. Was, that was you were trying to go as far as you could. Oh, uh, dude, I was max effort. Okay, max then, effort. Then look at the gains you made just doing that. And what? How long, how long ago was that? Probably like two and a half months. Yeah, it was right when the knee pain kind of started. Three months, man. Three months. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yeah, so I'm really starting to notice stuff too. Like, I mean, I'm only a week in the marathon training, but like I've been running a little bit before that. Um, this new form and everything is really helping. No knee pain. I've been doing strength workouts. I did one today. I've been doing legs twice a day. So like my first leg day for the week, I do like twice a week. Twice a yeah, week. twice a twice week. a week. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's right. I do. Uh, I do like runners lifts. Mm-hmm. So like bulgarian squats yep um i do uh one like lateral leg raises step ups weighted um i do some calf raises i do solo what what the hell is the it's like uh the achilles and lower part of your calf it's called it starts with an s i can't remember off the top of my head right now there's certain variations you can do of calf raises to focus on that to strengthen your like achilles and all that um, certain types of lunges and stuff. And then my, my second day of the week is heavy day. So like deadlifts squats, and I do like, uh, hamstring curls and, um, what else do I do? Lunges again, lunges are nice. Mm-hmm. Um, extension leg raises, you know, leg extensions. Awesome. Yeah, so I've been focusing on strength, ready to pick up miles at a low pace. Keep that zone two in mind. I'm going to have to keep running and walking for a bit. Uh, tomorrow's workout looks a little confusing. I'm going to talk to you about that one. Um, I was trying to comprehend it, but I'm just the the one letters always throw me off. And then I have to go down and look, and I'm like, shit, I forgot what I was already looking at. So. <laughs> Do you want me to move the key so it's closer? No, it's fine. I just got to, I got, it'll take me some time to get used to, but I'll figure it out. Right. Um, so yeah, dude, I'm enjoying it though, man. Like I haven't had a, I know it's coming, but I haven't had a day yet where I'm like, oh, I don't want to do anything. But I will say if I was back in Missouri, 100% would have been facing that already. Really? Um, yeah. Because of the weather, like Missouri was like 20 degrees the other day <laughs> and I was like out running. It was like 75 and nice. And I'm like, oh, this is. This makes the hot summers worth it because I can wake up early in Florida and go run, but I also can go I also can go run when it's 98 degrees and humid outside because I feel like I'm working harder and my body's like getting accustomed to that hot weather. And again, this is summertime. This isn't the weather's not even close to that right now, which this is also a funny fun point or fun fact. When I ran that 10k, I'm so I've I did all my longer runs like me being longer runs, meaning like four miles plus was all summertime in Florida. So I was going through water so fast. That's why I bought that vest. And I would like wear that vest anytime it was over five miles because I would, I would just literally throw down so much water. Well, it was 70, it was 68, 70 degrees. When I ran that 10 K I didn't drink. I, I took a 10 ounce water bottle with me. I didn't drink any water until I finished that that run it's you know that's six and 6.2 miles and i got once i got to the park i was like i don't even like i was thirsty but i was like i didn't feel like i needed water like i did in the summertime so it's really funny to like compare the differences of me summertime running in florida versus me running in like nice weather florida where it's not humid or anything and and if you're running in the morning it's actually quite chilly or at night so it's funny to see those differences in how my body gets accustomed to needing that water or that hydration at that certain distance. Cause if I would have ran six miles, 
summertime Florida and not have water, I would have, I would have, and hitting a two Oh five heart rate. I freaking would have passed out, dude. I, I don't know when it was, but you asked me recently, like, Hey, would you bring water for this? Maybe it was oh, for yeah. your 10 mile race. You were like, would you bring water for this? Or what would you do? And I was like, dude, I gotta be honest with you. Anything less than a half marathon. I don't even bring water out with me anymore. Now we, we've gone down in temperature a little bit and yeah, it's definitely going to be getting colder here, but I personally, the colder, the better, like there's no such thing as bad weather, only bad gear. And I love just layering up. I, I, I just love knowing that I'm not going to overheat. Oh. <laughs> I, I just love it. Like I am, give me a, give me a beanie, give me like a, a nice scarf and like, a base you don't layer. sweat a lot, do you? You're not a big sweater. Uh, I mean, yeah, I do, I guess, but like, that's dude, well, like when I sweat, like when I go run, like, and I got this from my dad. My dad got it from his dad, and poor Mason got it from me. Bro, we fucking sweat. Like, yeah, but like that's the great thing about winter. Like, you wear layers, and you can just like undo. Like, I don't know if you saw my reel from the race yesterday. Like, I had a button down on, so like. Every little bit, I would just unbutton a button. And it was probably 55, 60 degrees yesterday. And, yeah. you know, if I got a little bit of a chill when I'm going over the bre uh, bridge and it's breezy, I just button back up. If not, I, I don't know. Like, I just, I would, I'll take, and this is, I never thought I'd say this after Grindstone, but I'll take cold over hot anytime. No, no, I mean. I, fe I feel like, the, especially in running, like. Yeah, the, I get, no, I get that. So I get that point of i would agree with you on like on an everyday run like just to be a little colder but like dude when it starts getting and again i think this also like i'm getting accustomed to the warmer weather here in florida i went out on a run a night run the other night it was 60 degrees and i was i was pretty i was pretty cold dude like the run <laughs> felt great once i got my body heat up and stuff but i got out there i was like oh my god this kind of sucks dude you 60 know, but I was, is no shirt on still Oh, no way. Yeah, man. No, That's, like, uh, okay. Like, I and know I get cold. that. I, I live in Arizona. I know. I, I, I was wearing pea coats when it was 70 degrees in Arizona. I know. I know. <sighs> yeah, it was, it was, it was chilly. But like, we haven't turned our heat on yet. And we had like a little bit of a cold snap last week. And my house got down to like 51. And we were in our glory. 51. And we were in our glory. Jesus. Like, like even Avery's like, can I sleep with a sweatshirt on? I'm like, yes, you can. Oh my God, dude. 51, man. And it's probably it's probably sitting at 56 right now. Like when we see like when I see like I think the coldest in Missouri we ever let the house get was probably like 67, maybe 66. Like there'd be times where we walk in with the heat off and it'd be like 62 or something, but we we're like, holy shit, we gotta we gotta turn the heat on. 50 something dude that's pretty cold in the house 56 it's like there's no humid there's no humidity in there either so that makes that 50 degrees even that much colder yeah man yikes we like we like it and like during dinner time and like we get a fire going it'll probably go up a little bit but like yeah, yeah we tonight overnight the house when like when i get up tomorrow and come down and shower it'll be 53 degrees in the house oh doesn't that make you not want to get out of your shower though not because I don't turn the heat on in the shower anyway. <laughs> oh my god, you're so fucking weird. I don't even touch the hot water knob, dude. You suck, man. <laughs> I don't even like yeah. just all cold water, <laughs> cold plunge early, early. Oh yeah. my god, dude. I haven't turned the heat on in my shower. Actually, I'm not. I'm a, after grindstone when I got back and I had freaking hypothermia. Oh, I bet that felt so good. I was in the hotel and it was the first time I put the heat on in the shower in as long as i can remember but in my own house i would say it's been at least a year that nah because i started cold plunging like right around thanksgiving so maybe coming up on a year that i haven't even touched the hot water knob see i will say i have been doing cold showers um since i don't have a cold plunge like i what i do like what my my thing is i tell myself mentally i'm like instead of turn usually i mean my whole life i would just turn the water on and wait for it to get hot Mm -hmm. Well, now I turn the water on and jump right in. Mm -hmm. And I just, I like the, I tell myself the gift of taking the shower is staying in until the water gets warm. 
So like I'm in there and I get in, I'm, you know, it takes my breath away because it's, it's freezing cold to me. <laughs> I get in there, it hits me. I turn around, I let it hit my chest. I'm just like, Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> and then it, it takes a bit for it to get warm. And then once that warm hits, I'm like, Oh, this is good. You but try, I haven't tried taken- the, I'm um, try the opposite. Try doing the warm shower and then turning the heat off and seeing how long you could stay in. Mm-hmm. That uh, that lagoon dip I did today was nice. Little, I that, I mean that water had to have been sixty degrees. I mean I know it's not like super cold, but like you have to tell people in your reels that that's not a like that that's a pool. <laughs> what do you mean? Because like it looks like it, it's it's perceived as being like a open water. No, I feel you can't tell it's a like. Nah. Hmm. You can't tell it's like a really, really big pool, which is epic. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like you could tell that because you can see like cars and stuff driving in the back. No, I mean like in the back of what? What are you talking about? Like in the back of the video, like you can see like cars and stoplights and shit. Cars go around lakes? Well, I mean. It's a big pool. Yeah. Yeah, but it does. I don't think people think it's a big pool. I think you just have this really blue natural piece of water right off your property oh i never thought of that because i always i've seen it before before we weren't there and i was like oh, it's a a man-made pool you know it's, it's a big pool how do they keep the sand out of it i was uh, seeing that they, like, when you ran in like you ran through the sand and it was like cement like how do they keep the sand out they have a thing that they run constantly it's mm-hmm. like a vacuum so does the bottom feel like a pool and how deep does it get? Uh, like 10 to 12 feet. Really? Because it's, it, does it just look big in pictures or is it really that big? Uh, it's, I mean, it's pretty big. Like, I mean, it's hard to say like what's big, you know, when you're looking at a pool, but like, yeah, I mean, m- the most people, when we show them that for the first time, they're like, holy shit, this is crazy. Like, I remember when I saw it for the first time, like it, it's massive for a, for a man-made body of water. That's like fre- like a pool. Like not mm-hmm. like a man-made lake, like a freshly made pool. It's pretty big. Is it salt water or is it regular? No, it's fresh water. Yeah, I figured they. It must be. I figured it'd be cheaper to keep it salt water, but. Uh, it probably would be, but I don't know. It's it's fun, dude. We love it. It's you know in summertime. I mean, when it's hot down here, it's the best spot to be. But more. We, where we live the, the neighborhood that has that though where we don't want to live in this neighborhood um just because of certain reasons but um so we will miss that whenever we move to wherever the hell we're moving <laughs> but that's going to be an awesome pool to like to get back to what i was saying that's gonna like you you text me today like there's your cold plunge yep that'll be my new spot like i'll ride my so it's it's the that lagoon is exactly one mile from my house so a bike ride there is one mile, bike ride back is one mile. So like if I do a workout or something or a run, I can hop on the bike, go there, do my cold plunge. And like, I felt like how I felt getting out of your cold plunge when I was in New York. Yeah. Just not, it just wasn't as intense, but like I could feel my skin like getting goosebumps. And like when I got out, it felt like refreshing, but it definitely wasn't to the intensity of a, a, like a legit cold plunge, but it was almost got the full effect. Nice. Yeah, felt good. I can't wait till it's that time of season where like all the natural cold plunge people are going to come back. All the people that like don't have chillers like I have that like mm-hmm. maybe got off of it in the summertime and oh, dude, I'm just waiting for a plunge company to, like show up in my DMs. <laughs> <laughs> I just want one so bad. <laughs> dude, and then the plunge company, they just came out with like a new one. It's like 10 grand. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm like, dude. dude, man, that's aggressive. That is a lot. Oh, I mean, it's so cool though. They're like, "Hey, you want this?" Like, hey, but then on. again, like I look at like people like Eric Hinman and these people that are like really into the ice barrel. That one, like that, are still buying ice. Like, I don't understand. I wouldn't want to do that. How you can buy anything that doesn't have a chiller attached to it? Yeah, I would. Like, I bought a horse trough and put like a five hundred dollar chiller attached to it, which took me like an hour of watching YouTube videos and like four mm-hmm. hours of labor. And then I went over the top with it, but like I could have gotten by with that build under like 500 bucks and people like, 
Yikes. 100% would have a chiller if I bought one. You have to. Yeah, there's no, because I wouldn't do it as much if I had to go buy ice and put it in there. And and yeah, I think too, man, in Florida, you put ice in a in a bucket of water, it's not going to make it any colder. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's, it's a nice melter at that point. Yeah, it's, exactly. It's, it's not a nice bath. You're making that water comfortable is what you're doing. You're not making it colder. Yeah. So. You want to, uh, you want to hear all the, you want to hear all the things that you shouldn't do in your marathon? Let's, let's hear it, man. Well, first before, I mean, before we hear things we shouldn't do, I mean, the, the big news is, is, is you PR your marathon. Yeah. That's huge. I know it wasn't exactly what you wanted to get, but I mean, you still PR'd. I want to say, I feel really good about that, but okay, good. I will say here's, Here's like the anticlimactic piece of that. Well, hang on. Before you get into this, I got one question for you. It's a yes or no question. Mm-hmm. Besides, if you run this one in February with me, besides that, one for yourself, will you ever run another marathon again? Like not as a part of an ultra? Yes. Like, like a, a marathon ro- race. Like a, to, road, like, like a road marathon. Yep. It'll take a lot, man. Really? It'll take a lot. It's... Okay. So much different. I won't say shittier. It's so much different than um, like a trail run. And I think the misconception is that there's not a lot of trail runs. So it's like easier to sign up for. That is not the case. Like if if you go, if anybody goes on ultrasignup.com, you can filter by distance, state, time, mm-hmm. distance from your house, things like that. I'll second that. Dude, there's endless trail runs mm-hmm. and 50 K's and which a 50 K is pretty much a marathon. Let's call it. I mean, yes, there's an extra hour and there's an extra six miles, which six miles is a lot. But if you're going to train for a marathon, the little bit of extra training for the 50 K makes just going up to the 50 K in my opinion, like I can see if somebody wants to check a marathon off the box, off a box, like you, like, mm-hmm. right. You want to do a for marathon sure want to. on like, yeah. But if you've already done a marathon, maybe even done two marathons, I personally can't see the reason why you would ever like continue to just stay on the road. So I mean, for, for it, me to so, answer that, okay, to ahead. be like devil's advocate, I look at it as I also, I would, first I would agree with you. Like I have a feeling I'm probably going to love trail running way more than I would love road running. So mm-hmm. I'm with you on that. I've never done it legit trail race but i could see myself liking that a lot more but to play devil's advocate to that i think the reason i would maybe again never ran one so i don't know but why i could maybe want to run more is to try to get that like next level time like something about that about being like the top 10 percent or the top five percent time wise in a marathon like that is pretty cool yeah, like, and I mean, you have people like Casey Neistat. Now, he went really fast, but he came really, really close to a milestone. He went 301. So he's like, dude, I could have broke three hours. Mm-hmm. Okay, come back out and break it. Yeah. You know, or like you said, you're, um, you're 10 minutes away from qualifying for Boston. Right. Or you want to go to a major city like Chicago and, and make it an experience. Okay. But if you're a mid pack runner like I am, I, it was just, and you'll hear people say like in a mar in a marathon, like it's a, it's a tough distance because when you train for it, it becomes short enough where you have to push, mm-hmm. you have to suffer the entire fucking time or you don't train and you're out there for seven hours. Yeah. So there's, it's really, really hard to go out and, and have, in my opinion, an enjoyable experience out. Don't get me wrong. Yesterday was an outstanding day. I loved all of it and I'm glad that I did it. But when I got done with grindstone, 19 hours, hypothermia, like toes blistered up, chafing everywhere. I woke up the next day and I wanted that pain again. It's been over 24 hours since I've been done with the marathon, like zero interest. So what was the difference in pain then? I I think that there's definitely more physical pain than like in the in the ultra. It was a lot more of a mental battle. 
Okay. Um, it was more of a fight with myself and what I was capable of. My muscles hurt, but in a different way. And in the ultra, like when my muscles hurt, like it's acceptable to kind of walk a little bit. If, if, if I can say that, like where I had other goals yesterday where I was like, I'm not going to fucking walk. Like no matter what, I can jog 12 minutes per mile. I am not walking today. And I didn't, I didn't walk the whole time. I walked in and out of a porta potty a bunch of times, but I did not walk on the road. So that was even in my previous PR, that wasn't the case. So this was the first time in my life I've ever ran for 26.2 miles, which was awesome. But yeah, so to answer your question, no, I don't, if, if somebody said to me like, Hey, I, I want to run a marathon, you, you know, you want to come with me, would you do it with me? Or like, those things I would love to go. Like if a charity called me, like, and they were like, there's a lot of like guides that lead the blind and things like that. Or even the autism community, they do guides. And if I can do something like that, that I would be all in for. Like, that's kind of the only way I'd see it. Like if I, the only way I'm going to run another road marathon is if I'm helping somebody else achieve their goals. That's, that's it. There's, I, there is no other reason that I, I could see doing it. Hang on. Uh, I got to ask you something. Okay. <clears throat> you know Theo Vaughn, right? Yeah, of course I do. I be was going to... Be, be careful. I don't want to well, edit this podcast. I, know. I, I was going to... I'm not... I, well, that's the thing. I was going to try and... <laughs> I was going to try and throw a Theo Vaughn type joke in there, but no. I couldn't. Yeah, no. I, couldn't. I don't want to edit the podcast. <laughs> You could tell me it later. Okay. But I, now, now you made me lose my train of thought. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. So here's why, uh, although I PR'd by 19 minutes, I'm still not happy with it. Because my PR was 417. And this was my 15th marathon. And I've only broke five hours twice. One of them was the PR uh, 417. And one of them was New York City. I think it was like 440. The reason why I don't like count those because I never trained really. And the, the 417 that I got, I was running. I was active. But I think I was looking at my brother. I think that year I ran 360 miles total. Wow. When I set that PR. Dang. I'm at 1,700 for this year already. Yeah. To give some like comparison. So it was, and I, I joked about it even on the podcast that like I could have PR'd like with a hangover. Mm -hmm. Like that the PR wasn't in question for me. And that's why it wasn't really a goal. Now I did have a major goal of breaking four hours because taking 17 minutes off and getting in at nine minute pace was, um, pretty like that was a good goal. And that's, that's the saving grace. That's why I'm very happy. I'm blessed that I got to go out there and do it. I went nine Oh three. And some people are like, Oh man, don't you want to go back out? And you know, three seconds off per mile. I'm like, no, mm. don't care. Um, and I, I really, I really wanted to go 345. So like in the back of my mind, like the expectations I had for myself, I was, what was the official final time? 357, 12. Okay. And so you wanted 345. So you missed it by what? 13 minutes. Yeah. So it was pretty much the difference between, it was different between 835 pace. I think 835 is like, if you were on an official course, at exactly that distance, I think you have to run 835 to go 345. But I was thinking 830s because the course is going to be a little long. It's, you know, you don't take the perfect path that they measure. So I was thinking 830s. And whether I said it out loud, seriously or not, like I knew deep inside that 830s was very, very manageable for me. Uh, I'd been running and holding at 10 miles plus in the low eights, like the 10 mile trail run I did a couple of weeks ago, which was really close to 11 miles. Like I did that at 803 pace and that was on the trails ups and downs with more elevation than the New York city marathon had like, okay, now you're like, all right, well, it's 16 miles more than that. But I pushed in that race, but to, to lose 30 seconds over the course of the marathon, I knew it was manageable. I ran 13 miles two weeks ago and I did that at 8.15 pace. No problems whatsoever, like on a casual half marathon. And like I joked and told people like, 
I'm going suicide pace. I'm going full send. I'm either crushing my thing or I'm going to blow up. And I kind of said that, but at the, at the end of the day, I did want to have a plan and that plan was 345. Now, as far as the execution, I, I made mistakes and maybe I went out a little bit too hard. I think here was my mindset. I had, I had a perfect morning. Um, I don't generally eat a lot in the morning anyway when I first wake up, but I'm usually up around five o'clock in the morning. So with daylight savings getting up, it was my morning, regular morning wake up for me. So that was fine. But with the race start starting at 9, 10, and really that being 10, 10, I don't know if I got enough calories in in the morning. And I, although I never felt hungry, I, I just, the way my body was acting, I, I kind of had a feeling like there was a little bit there. Now, the other thing that I'm going to stay food at that race. Sorry. Yeah. They, like before they had like bagels and stuff like that. And I, I had a half of a bagel at probably like seven or eight, maybe seven thirty. but like on the course, they had like bananas late in the race, like after 20, uh, mm-hmm. they might've had a gel station, uh, maybe around mile 23, but like, other than that, no, definitely not like the ultra scene where you pull yeah. into an aid station and people are cooking bacon and quesadillas and shit. And shit. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, oh, that'd be so, I can't wait for that, dude. And I knew that the first mile was up the bridge and I knew that was going to be slow. And then I knew subsequently that the second mile was down the bridge and that was going to be really fast. And I knew that I wanted to get off the bridge with that net up and that net down. I wanted to be close to my like 8.20, 8.25 pace. Because I knew I was going to slow over time. I wasn't going to negative split. Well, I think my second mile, I went like 7.05. And, uh, oh, shit. Did you look yeah. down? You're like, oh, my God. I need to I slow down. I did not look at my watch until 5K. Um, and I told you I was just going to have the time of day on there. And I did. I just had the time of day, and I raced on feel. I was talking exactly what we talked about in the podcast. Would I was you go me- back and change that? Uh, yeah, I think I would have because although, I mean, that podcast, we talked about how well Mm -hmm. I thought I knew myself, but I kind of did because if you look at at my heart rate splits, which are on Strava, I post all that stuff, my heart, I was a metronome. Like my heart rate was 141 the entire time, 141 to 143 for the first really 18 miles. And at 5K, I saw the clock and I was like, because I had a clock at every mile. And at 5K, oh, I saw tough. I saw the clock and I was like, oh man. I'm like, I am. I was going uh, 808. And if you don't run, you, it may not seem like a lot, the difference between 808 and 820, like 12 seconds on a mile. But it's it's a really big deal physiologically and... I just, I felt good. And the first mistake I made was not really listening to that 808 and being like, Brad, you have to calm down and you have to come back down to 820s. At that point, like the crowd starts to set itself up in a way where like, you probably saw this in the 10 mile or a little where in the beginning people are passing you, you were passing people. It was weird. But the longer the race goes on, the more you kind of get settled in with people going about your same speed. Bro, I didn't realize it would be like that. Yeah. That's, so, a, that's that is one thing I noticed in the ten mile run is like the first three to five miles was like complete chaos. Everything after five miles was like I was with these people almost for the rest of the race until the last like mile or two, and then I picked it up. And I went in, yeah. So I was like with those eight oh eight, eight ten people, and the miles were clicking away, and I just felt good felt good kept going the weather was perfect the, the, the vibes are insane i posted a long form video today you could check it out and it's like it feels like it like the tour de france when they're coming up the the hill and the people are ch- like i don't know and i was kind of just feeling myself and i think what happened was i started to believe in myself a little bit too much in my abilities and i didn't realize it but I was PRing my 15K. I PR'd my half marathon, which you should never do in a full. Like, especially with the amount of half marathons I run. Mm-hmm. It's not like I run them occasionally and like I pulled a PR out of my, Like, 
I run half marathons every week. Yeah. And I do half marathons at marathon pace like every other week. So to go 143 and a half marathon where my PR was 146, like that, that should have been another red flag. But I, the, we, so hear, when that happened out in the race, did you know you PR'd? Uh, no, I didn't know what my half marathon PR was. Oh, okay. I didn't know. But I knew, I knew it was around 145, but. So you knew you were like, when you hit that half mile or that half marathon point, you look down, you're like, oh shit, like I'm, I'm booking it. Yeah. And I even said in the video, like I was joking, like, oh, I'm probably going to pay for that. And I was saying that cause I knew it. And oh, it's but like I said, I be the worst feeling. And I was like, well, we're, we either have to like really slow down now. And then, and here was my mindset. I could slow down. And then if shit goes bad, it's going to go bad. And I just slow down or while I'm feeling good and my heart rate is still low, should I just keep going? And then when shit hits the fan, if it hits the fan, it does. And I'll, I'll reevaluate that. And that's kind of the, the option I went with. And so my nutrition strategy, which is really the ultimate thing that really caught up with me was I had a good strategy as far as like when I needed to eat. So I had my 250 calorie gel and two salt tabs that I wanted to have every 50 minutes or so, which for me was pretty much at 10K. So at 10K, I had 250 calories and two pills. At 20K, I had 250 calories and two pills. At 30K, I had 250 calories and two pills. And when I tell you, Jay, that that gel, the same gel that I eat every single day, mm-hmm. it's never given me an issue. That third gel, I put it, I took it in my mouth and it was like, it didn't hit anything. Like I was instantly, not like I took it, kept running, yeah. was like, oh, my stomach. Like the water stations, which were every mile, were probably like 30 yards long. Like they were big. There's 51,000 people in this race. So they got to get watered all. The, it's a big, it's not like it's just like one little six foot table, right? Mm-hmm. So I took one coming, I would take it coming in there knowing I want to get the gel in my mouth and I want to get the pills in my mouth and I'm going to grab a water cup and I'm going to wash that down. So that's really what happened. So by the time I got to a cup of water to wash it down, my stomach had already dropped. And I'm like, Damn. I'm like, oh man, it was instant. So I got in the bathroom quick. Everything went okay. But it wasn't one of those where like you're running, you're like, I got to poop. And then you poop and you feel better. Mm. It was like, Stuck I around. went, yeah. And my, it was in, I was just in knots. Here's the mistake that I made. And like I said, this is just, me feeling myself, me thinking I'm a superstar and really not training this distance and this style of race. Cause this is not something that comes up in an ultra. I, I should have been drinking like a gulp of water or two at every single mile. Yeah. And the only time I was putting anything in my mouth, I was treating water as part of my nutrition strategy Oh. where it shouldn't have been like that. And it was unseasonably warm, 60 degrees, but I was still sweating you know, I sweat a lot and I essentially got dehydrated. The gel didn't do it to me. It was dehydration. And after 30 K, which is like roughly 19 miles, I got to 20 and I was like, I got 10 K to go from 10 K on. I was in the porta potty three times. I, and now all systems were just shutting down. Dehydration is not something to fuck around with. And it's one of those things where you're like, I'm dehydrated. I need to chug water, but your body doesn't want anything. So it's like, I'm trying to chug water, but I'm nauseous. And as soon as I, ch- it was just a disaster. And, uh, I said to myself, oh, I- sucks, <laughs> dude. and all the while I'm watching. So at 20 miles, my average pace was, uh, eight So I'm, I'm supposed to come in under like right around eight 30, like, I mean, three 30. And I'm like, all right, well, if I can just hold on. If I can just hold on, I can, I can salvage this 345 still. I can still do it. And I reset my watch and I'm like, I'm going to watch my pace. I'm going to keep my pace at 930. Like, n- I'm not going to let that happen. And it was like one porter potty. I'm sitting there in the porter potty in disaster and I'm just watching my average pace. Just tick, 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 which now is starting to F with me mentally. Like, oh man, now I'm not even going to get the sub four hours. And it's just like, boom, boom, boom. And I mentioned in a reel, this is where old Brad would have cashed in a pit party, would have walked in the last 10K, would have 
cried to Tara on the train ride home about what a failure I was and what a fuck up I was and what do I think I'm doing and I'm an imposter. These are all the things that would have. But like I changed the narrative in my mind, which is a really big deal. And I said like, A, I'm going to go for that goal of not walking at all. And B, if I can just get to Central Park, I know that the crowd is going to not allow me to walk and then I'll be able to shuffle it in. And I think in that last 10K, I was doing like 10 30s and that was as fast. Like now my legs are starting to like get to that point where you'll feel this, where they, they feel like if you take another step, they're just going to seize up and like, they're not cramping, but they're right fucking there. And at about 23 miles, I noticed that my shirt was dry and I wasn't sweating anymore. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And yeah, I, I literally went from running eight, 808 to 811 for 20 miles and then salvaging 1030s with multiple bathroom stops to get in. And my pace dropped 40 seconds per mile in the last six miles of the race. So, and, go ahead. Go ahead. well, so I got three, I think, main takeaways then. And I'm trying to like take this as lessons learned for mine. Oh, yeah. Eat before the race. Make sure you get your calories in. Or, or stay, stay according to your clock. Like if, if you're not a morning person and like you don't eat in the morning and you have a 6am start time for your race, maybe you don't have a huge breakfast. Yeah. But this wasn't a normal race. Like yeah. it was nine o'clock, which is late for a race, not to mention daylight savings. So my body really thought it was 10 and by 10 o'clock every day, I'm starting to put calories into my system. Yesterday at 10 o'clock in the morning, I started redlining, you know, yeah. a marathon. So yeah, yeah. that, Know the nutrition plan and know what time you're going to start for sure. Okay. So nutrition, food, eating, all that. Mm -hmm. Second, don't go out too fast. Yeah. And it's Jay, it's like you fucking, that's the first thing you read it. I said to my students today, if you Google top 10 yeah. marathon mistakes, I checked nine of them off. No mm -hmm. problem. I checked nine of them off. Like don't go out too hard. Don't go out too hard. Yeah. I think maybe not go out too hard, but have a plan and stay disciplined to that yeah. plan. Even if okay. you feel good, like I'm not mad at myself that I went out running eight Oh eights. I'm mad at myself at the, the 5k when I didn't, when I didn't pull back and I know I should have, I'm mad at myself at the half marathon when I PR and I was feeling myself and I, I knew I could have backed down. Those were the things that made me mad at myself. Last one, drink water, even though you really don't think you need it. Yeah. And not in a way like where it's summer where like, right. You're thirsty cause it's hot. And right. I, it's actually, I have such a bonehead. Like I made the same mistake in Ironman Boulder where it was cool, but I think too, humidity is a big deal. Like when you live by the water, like I do, you're used to always sweating, but when the humidity goes down and your sweat evaporates quickly and you don't like feel the water, like dripping down your ass crack. You're like, Oh, I'm not even sweating. I'm not mm -hmm. losing the water. And really what happened yesterday was especially with the breeze of running the breeze on the course, the bright sun and a really, really dry day, humidity in the high thirties, low forties. I wasn't monitoring how I didn't, I didn't monitor how much like my body's still working. And yeah, you're, it's still trying to cool itself down. Even if you don't feel wet. Yeah. I, Water should not be a part of your nutrition plan. And that's a big lesson. Like water is just a necessity for life. And all the electrolytes and the calories you take, that has to be separate from water, which I did not do. And I took that for granted because when I'm training for ultras, I have my vest on. I always have a liter of water on. Yeah. I can just take a sip whenever the hell I want. Like aid stations are so far apart that you're like, I'm going to fill my bottles. I'm going to drink a lot. Like it was almost, it's kind of funny. Like having the water in the marathon every single mile was almost a false sense of security mm -hmm. because it was almost in a way like I'm a mile in. I've been running for eight minutes. I don't need to take a sip of water. The, the water is so far or so frequent that when I'm thirsty, I'll just get one at three miles or I'll get mm -hmm. one at four miles, or I know I'm going to take gels 
at six miles. I'll just do it then. Where in ultras, it's like, yo, there's aid stations every 12 miles. While you're here, you better be filling up your water for the journey to the next one. And you better be drinking as much water as you can before you go on to the next journey. So I think I just took for granted the need for water and how much in my training, it's just readily available. Right. And I knew I didn't want my hand held because once again, there was water every mile. I'm like, I don't need to carry this bottle with me. I'm gonna have, I'm, I'm gonna have all the water a guy can drink, and here I am, the asshole that that collapsed and died because of dehydration. And it was like, it was the most water I've had available to me in a race in years, and I dehydrated myself. So that's one thing I noticed when I ran the ten mile race is that they didn't have water at every mile, but they had it like probably like every three because it was loops. So like there were certain st- you knew every time you were gonna pass it. Yeah. And so it was probably like every two and a half to three miles I had a, a a water station. And I every time I passed it, I drank it. But that's because I I know I get thirsty and I sweat yeah. a lot. And I was sweating a lot that race. But the problem with that, the problem with that was to me, and I bet the same thing would happen in a in a marathon race, it sucked to grab that water and try to like drink it. Cause I like I didn't want to slow down. You squeeze- like I was still trying to like I did. I I saw somebody else do that. So I was like, oh, that's a good idea. So like what I would do is I'd hit the first person, grab theirs, and I would chug it. I'd throw it back. And then I would grab another one on my like as I'm going through. And that one I would kind of keep as like a sipper. But like yeah. every time I would like go to take a drink, it would mess up my breathing and mess up my flow and mess up my cadence and mess up my form. I'm just like, this is so inconvenient to do this. So then I would end up just like pouring half of it on me. And then just try to drink as much as I could. But I am glad, like, I'm not, okay, well, I'm not glad that happened to you. But that reassures me that I do need to take it as serious as I did in the 10 mile run, as I do in my my marathon run, that I need to be drinking water at every station. Yeah. And I was so concerned with seconds, like in hindsight now, like, so when you're running through and there's, there's not 50,000 people right around you, but right. there's a lot of people you see in the video. Like I'm shoulder to shoulder with people for most of the race. So when these water stops come, you like the middle, there's like tables on each side of the road. The middle is like the fast lane. And you see people like slowing down, going over to grab water. And you're like, no way, man. Like I'm not losing. And I guarantee all those people pass me at the end because I was so concerned with backing my pace off for literally a second. Mm-hmm. to go get it. I was like, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to trip on somebody. Like I'm just going, I'm taking this, I'm going right down the middle. And I got so concerned or so caught up with like my time. And this has one, been one of the things that I've also said that I love about ultras. Like when I did grindstone, like very, very, very few people asked me what my time was N- and nobody cared. Everyone's yeah, just like, it. Dude, you ran 68 miles? Yeah. You know, I walked into the building today and people that don't even talk to me were like, what was your time in the marathon? Mm. You you ran the marathon. What was your time? Oh, how was your time? Yeah. I heard Mr. Faber went this time. What'd you get? You know, and- Did you beat Mr. Faber? Yeah, I smoked him. Okay, okay, cool. But I wasn't, I was supposed to. He he does this very casually. Love you, Mr. Faber. I love Um, But like, I got caught up in that hype. I got caught up in influencers that are running 245. Yeah. I got Which caught- is so crazy to even think about. Dude, dude, like I I I mean, I fell victim to a lot of dumb bullshit, you mm-hmm. know, and that's why I'm only mad at myself. Like, dude, I have no fucking excuse. The weather was perfect. The weather was perfect. I had a great morning. I slept well the night before the race. It was daylight savings. I got an extra hour worth to sleep. Mm-hmm. Like they, I don't I don't see how I can get a more perfect like hand, you know? But like I got bluffed out of aces because you know, I I thought that I needed to, I thought I was defined by like going out and doing 345 and you know, I I think that if I, I'll tell you this, if I would have ran eight twenties in the beginning of the race, I would have came in, I would have came, I would have been able to hold three twenty, uh, eight twenty for the whole race or eight thirty. If I came out off the bridge 
at mile two and I turned my watch on and I had alerts set for when I went under 830 pace, I would have went 345. And I know that. So there is that saving grace too that I can say to myself. So doesn't, doesn't that make you want to run it again though? Nah, man. Because I just know. You know How much stuff you, do you have in your life that you don't need to worry about because you just know? Like you don't need to punch your son in the face. You know you could beat him up. <laughs> you know, like. Yeah. I mean, and, that's a little different. And I mean, like my, my, a great quote my dad used to say to me because I was a, I had a temper and uh, I would start shit with people, especially when I was drinking. Like he'd say, you know, like I'd come home all busted up and he'd be like, did, did you pick the fight or did somebody pick it with you? And he knew. I was like, yeah, mm -hmm. I picked the fight. He goes, you got to keep, you got to remember that when you pick a fight, you better be ready for a war. And uh, yesterday I picked a fight with the New York City Marathon and I did not think about the war. I didn't think about the battle. I felt invincible. I thought about, I run ultra marathons. I've run 1600 miles this year. I got second place in a 10 mile trail run. And the New York marathon said, Oh, that's cute. This isn't, this isn't ultra marathon land. There's no fucking quesadillas here, bud. You know, but there's no, there's no hydration vests. There's no cushy, soft shoes. There's there, you know, it, it, it's just different. You know, but hang on though. Go. So you, you've been kicking yourself in the ass, but you still did PR, dude. Like, yes. even given all that stuff that happened to you, getting dehydrated, not drinking the water, going out too fast, hitting the porta potties, you know, all that shit hitting you in a row, you still PR'd your marathon time. And that's a tribute to me being consistent and just yeah. being being a runner. Yeah. Um, and which is a ripple effect of sobriety and everything like that. And that's another reason why, like, I know, I know that if I continue to do the right things that I've been doing, and if I continue to stay consistent, I'll get on a marathon course again and, and I'll be okay. And you're running with me. Maybe I'm going to three fifty something. I told, <laughs> if I, I come run with you, I, I am staying on your shoulder and we are finishing the race together, whether we're out there for seven hours or for three hours. But <laughs> I mean, yeah, like everyone's like, oh, are you, in, did you apply for the Berlin Marathon Lottery just opened? And everyone's like, oh, did you put in your application for Berlin? And I'm like, no. And they're like, oh, you hate traveling out of the country. I'm like, no, I just, I, I don't want to do a road marathon unless I am helping somebody else achieve their goals. I will do it. I will do it. If, if somebody DMs me and they're like, hey, man, I've been listening to you for a while or I've been following you, like, Corey wants to run a marathon and he's like, Hey man, can you come run this marathon with me? I'll be there. You know, like I, you didn't ask me to call. I said to you, like, do you want me to be there? I'll fucking be there. Mm -hmm. You know? And because I, I do want to help. I know that having people there and doing something with somebody else will, will help you. That's how I did my third Ironman. My buddy was like, Hey man, I need a training partner. I'm like, all right, if I'm going to train with you, I might as well sign up and do the race. Right. But nah, man, I, like I have a 13 mile trail run on the calendar that I'm looking more forward to than any marathon I could sign up for. Mm -hmm. I have this backyard ultra coming up on December 9th, which could only be four miles. And I am more excited about that. And it has nothing to do with the fact that I'm not an elite runner. Cause I, I probably could be for a 41 year old guy. I could probably, I, that's the other thing too. I never did speed work. I got on the track. My brother, Danny's it's a, you know, he's very good at putting things in perspective for me. He's like, Brad, like you finished grindstone, you kind of jogged and recovered for two, two weeks, which justifiably so. And he's like, and then you did like two track workouts and a couple threshold workouts. He's like, yeah. so, so you did speed work for a fucking month. And what'd you expect? So it's like, if I, I think if I really did it, maybe this will be something we'll do one day. Um, but probably not. Uh, maybe I'll put in like a marathon block. And I'll do two speed workouts a week and I'll do threshold weeks. And I, you know, like, but I, I think that times don't 
I need external motivation, but I don't think I'm not motivated by times anymore. I'm more motivated by personal growth and achievement. Like I said, when we started this, I said, you know, I liked the hundred K cause it was more of a mental battle. Like those are the achievements that I want to see. I know that I can run a marathon. I want to go out there and I want to fail finding something that I don't know if I can do it. You know, I want to be, I want to be terrified by elevation gain. I don't want to be terrified by time. Mm -hmm. No, I I want to DNF because I don't make a time cutoff trying to do something that's way outside of my scope. Then like, then kind of hobble across the finish line. But it was, it was, it was, like I said, at the end of the day, it was an amazing day. And it's one I'll remember for the rest of my life. It, it looked fun, dude. I could have went slower. I could have went faster. I know. And at the end of the day, I, I had a great race. And maybe this will be my last New York City Marathon. And I, if, I, if I die with 357.12 being my fastest New York City Marathon time on a sneaky course with a lot of gain in the second half and... I'm very, very content, especially you know in that everything that that went wrong was right. under my own control. Grindstone, that storm, I couldn't do anything about that. This, right. this was all on me. So, marathon in the books. You have, you said, the backyard ultra coming up. You got the thirteen miler coming up. Yeah. You know what I always think about? Sex. <laughs> Besides that, <laughs> no. What's that? I t- I turned on this race last night when I couldn't sleep, and dude, like my biggest goal. I haven't really ever like besides the podcast. Like I haven't announced it on Instagram or anything like that. But like the biggest running goal I have in my life that I will like maybe cry when I've crossed the finish line. Kobe Donna. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's what got me into this, dude. Like, besides, like, you, but, like, you got me into this. But, like, that's the first thing I, like, that stumbled me. Like, I knew there was marathons and shit, but I never I never paid any attention to any, any of that. Any 200 or, or Cocodona? No, Cocodona. Cocodona. And, like, the thing I'm scared about with Cocodona is I feel like by the time I slash we get to the time where we can do it, there's going to be 500 mile races out there. I know, dude. You know, they're getting know. so freaking crazy. But but even if that's going on, that race alone is one of those things that's like, that would mean like, that would mean something big to me. Cause that's like, like when I saw Andy Glaze running it and I'm like, what in the fuck is this? And yeah. I'm hooked now, dude. I'm hooked. And there's a lot of people that just started signing up for that race too. So I'm seeing that. I, it's definitely not in the cards for 2024 for me, but um, 2025 oh, years from that 2025. Um, yeah, I'm going to go. I, I'm going to at least do one of them. We'll just yeah. say that. Yeah. I think depending on how the race scene evolves. Um, yeah, man. I think but, ultra running is getting more popular too. It, it it I think it is it isn't it isn't I think their major brands are starting to pick up on it yeah and uh, you know that definitely helps and amazing race directors having these incredible races mm-hmm. um and social media social media but there's one thing I did learn about this year and I would never call anybody out but this sport including myself I DNF I didn't make the cut this this shit will expose you oh for and sure. I know a lot of these guys that are running marathons every single month or, you know, they're, they're fast, this, that, and the other thing. And they're like, Oh, they use their social status to get them into big races like Leadville and things like that. And they, 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 they DNF, they, they can't, they, and I said this about Ironman and I can say this about the diet, like about the marathon, like you can go out and walk a marathon. There's no, you don't have to worry about the cutoff. There was people finishing last night at 11 o'clock at night. Like you can go out and walk 26 miles in eight hours if you want. It, even if you've never run a mile in your life, I guarantee you, you could go out tomorrow. Mm-hmm. You're going to hurt like hell the next day. But anybody, maybe not anybody, 90% of the population, even with our 
trending obesity, you could go out, if you had the will, you could go out and walk for 26.2 miles in eight hours. Anybody can do that. That is not true for an ultra. You, that is not true for an ultra. And that's the thing I love about it. It will expose you. You can't use your social influence to get you through an ultra marathon of a hundred K or a hundred miles. And that's what I love about it. But that's also what keeps me from like making my eyes too big for my stomach. Like when I first did the 50 K last year, I'm like, I, I was supposed to do, um, heavily in a hundred last week. You know, I was like, I'm going to do a hundred miler, you know, right after that, I'm going to do this, that, and the other thing. And I had to take my name off a couple lists because after I did that hundred K, I'm like, shit, like I had full intentions six months ago, not even six months ago, over the summer, I had full intentions of either doing Cocodona or Moab next year. I had zero doubt in my mind that I was going to do one of them, that hundred K. And it wasn't because I don't think that I have it in me. It's just, I'm not ready. And I'm not ready for the emotional piece. Like you got to go out there. I never realized how much emotional strength I gained with the 50K and my first backyard ultra and things like that. Like you need to learn what 10 hours, 12 hours feels like on the brain before you start thinking about multi-day events. So I'm like, Mm -hmm. that's just out. So next year I'll probably do, I'll probably try and do like two, maybe three 100 mile races, probably two 100s and a 50 miler. Um, I hired on a coach. It's going to be awesome. And, um, yeah, and I'm going to start thinking about telling my boss that, yeah, I'm going to need a week off in May. I think, um, May, 2025, I'm going to go for Cocodona. I, I want Cocodona the most too, as well. And uh, there's personal reasons why I want that. I, I, I did my first Ironman in Arizona. I'm like attached to it like that. And, Arrow Viper running and Jamil Curry. I, I love him as a person and a brand and what he's done. And when I was doing the Ironman before Jamil had uh, Arrow Viper, he was always trail running and he would have these small little like show up races at McDowell Park that have now become these huge, huge parks. So like I kind of knew him before he was famous. I think he was just in college at the time. And uh, so, yeah, I have that. But then like I see races like the Tahoe 200 or like Bigfoot. I'm like those races are fucking cool too, man. Yeah, I know the Tahoe 200 is, looks awesome. I'm gonna have to t- and I'm gonna have to take off for work, um, because no one wants to do that stuff in the middle of summer. Bigfoot is in the summer, but uh, I don't think Bigfoot should be my first 200. And I'm not saying Cocodona should be, but uh, I think as far as like the logistics and elevation and things like that, and uh, yeah, dude, 2025. Well, stay tuned because we'll bring the action to you. <laughs> Are we going to do that one together? I'd like to. May 2025? I don't know if I got that in me, dude. And I'm like, wow, that seems so far away. It's not, right? though. That's like, that's the same amount of time as when I started my run streak, pretty much. Yeah, like that's, I need, yeah, I need a couple years of being, con- I have, like, here's the other thing with my running stuff. I haven't been consistent enough to even know my threshold, like right where I'm at right now. I yeah, had the right. knee knee thing happen. I've I think the longest I on Strava that I've been consistent was like two and a half months or something like that. Dude, a marathon and a hundred K next year is an amazing year. Yeah. That's an incredible year for you. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be big. And then a hundred in twenty twenty five, maybe a hundred and a fifty. And then you might be like a twenty twenty six guy. Yeah. Sounds sounds about right. Oh, and, Mason and I are doing another five K. Nice. He's going to try and PR. Love it. 36 minutes is this time. Yeah, or I, told him, I told him we're going to go sub 35. All right. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. We're bringing the action. Yep. All right. I think, uh, I think we've given the people what they need. Yeah. Well, I just want to circle back to the New York marathon as we, as we close this and, Say, uh, because I know myself too, and I'd be in the same shoes, like f- focusing on all the shit I did wrong and whatnot, but like you still PR dude, like yeah. killed I it. Still ran the, and look where you're at right now to where you were two years ago. Yeah. That's the big thing. Like that's the big picture. I'm almost like, uh, I almost like don't know the reality. If you, 
if anybody watches the the long form video um that I made about the marathon, it's on Brad Trains. There's a part in the middle when uh I'm like sitting there and I think I come on and I say something. It's right before I'm like, it feels really good to train for something. And I think um I sat down, I I, I said something like, Man, I'm fucking ready. And I started talking about how I've I've never been like so not nervous for a race. I started bawling. I had to cut the video and restart it. And I restarted it when I was like, it just feels so good. And when I first say it, you can see, you see me smile. Like I kind of look over here and I smile. I smiled at a guy that saw me bawling when I was filming it the first time and I hit it. And I was like, dude, I can't keep it together, man. I explained to him like briefly, like how blessed I was and like how I feel like I'm living in a fairy tale. Like, I don't even know which way is up anymore. And uh, he's like, all right. He's like, get yourself together. You can film it again. And uh, so when I press record, he was over here behind the camera going, you got this, you got this. <laughs> don't cry, don't cry. So I smiled at him and I was like, I had to make sure I didn't look at him again. But there's a little behind the scenes of like what was going on. But I, I really had a moment. And you you kind of know like the faces that I'll make right before I'm about to start bawling. And like you could, I, I had a really, really tough emotional moment. And like you said, there's, there's a lot to be happy about and I have no idea which way is up. I really don't. And, uh, you know, getting, getting on the subway, I didn't have my phone on the whole day, like getting on the subway and having like, I, I maybe get like, you know, I slide the DMS. I, I maybe get like, at any one time, I'll, there'll be like five or five to 10 DMs that I haven't answered because um, I'm not always on Instagram. But I had like scrollable blue dots, like like the amount of people that had reached out, the amount of people that you know sent me messages either in the morning or in the afternoon, and they're still coming in. The people that shared the reel that I made and all these fucking strangers, man. And it, it, we, we've been through this on the money side. Like we both have very big YouTube channels, uh, all things considered. And we've all been, we've both been in a position where we've gotten too many messages that we can answer, <laughs> you know? And like, it, it was just, this is a different type of community. And we've mentioned that before. And just the support that it's, it's unreal, dude. It's just, bro, I'm already figuring that out. Like it, yeah, I've made the, once I'm officially made that switch to like saying, okay, my personal brand is is making this massive change to this because this is what I'm passionate about right now. Yeah, and, and I I've feel noticed that that community is is a it's so much better. When we were growing YouTube, I felt like yeah, like there was a little bit of vanity piece. Like I wanted a hundred thousand subscribers. Like mm -hmm. I wanted a big YouTube channel. I knew I'd never be famous with a hundred thousand subscribers or a hundred thousand followers on Instagram. I knew that that like in the money space that kind of like, I'm not Graham Stefan, you know, I'm just not, I was not going to get there. And, and I'm not saying I'll get there in the running space, but I, I more want a hundred thousand followers in the running space because I feel at my point and what I've been through, like, I feel like I can help not even inspire. I don't want to use the word inspire. I feel like I can just help lead people much differently than I did in the money space. And I don't need the clout. I don't need the free shoes. I, I, I don't need the brand deals. Like I'm over that part too. Like we both we're good with money. Like this, if I said that I grew my YouTube channel and I wasn't thinking about money or anything like that, I'd be lying. Like the money was good. But now that I'm older and I got the money, now I genuinely just want to grow it just to like, have conversations about sobriety with people in the DMs or just to travel and experience new trials with people. Yeah. Or like or have... the amount of messages you we've gotten about just people being like, I've I've been listening to the podcast or I've seen you guys, you and like I've get these all the time. Like, hey, really enjoying these new like latest podcast episodes and the recent change you and Brad made on Instagram, blah, 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 blah. You guys got me back into running again and I haven't ran in 10, 15. Like, dude, that's so cool that nothing better than that feels awesome. 
So yeah, and uh, I will let people know that we're trying to line up some guests. Um, mm-hmm. If anybody is on Instagram, um, I've been talking with Jeremy Miller, uh, an amazing guy. I'll probably post something like if you, if you do know who he is, if you have any questions you want us to ask him, um, he might be. He, I think he won't be next Monday. I think he'll be the Monday after that, like the week of Thanksgiving. His episode will come out, but yeah, man, I I just I I I feel the New York City Marathon was just another piece of the fairy tale, and it's a fairy tale that we're building on our own. Like th- things like fitness and taking care of yourself are things that you can do on your own, and I've been very very lucky where I've been doing it now for. St- for long enough where I feel like the imposter syndrome is going away. And, uh, you know, there's I'm getting seats at different tables now and, and it's, it's really fucking good, man. We, we could say it all we want. And I just want people to know that don't listen to like, or don't see three fifty seven twelve and think that I just pulled that out of my ass. <laughs> good. Just, you don't even have to watch my old videos. Just go see what I looked like a year ago. You know, Seriously, just go see what I look like. And and that should paint a little different picture or go back to some of our old episodes on YouTube, go watch and see how wasted Jay and I were, you know? And like, I, I'm not saying I regret those days, but it was just a different person. And like, it was, if you are getting fucked up randomly on a Tuesday and you want to <laughs> stop that, you can. I remember getting pictures from you like the next morning when you go down to your office and you took a picture and there was like 12 beer cans at your desk. Yeah, and you're like, well, you can tell we recorded last night. I'm just like, damn, dude. Now we're drinking NAs and bottles of water while we record, and I wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah, no, same. All right, buddy. And I will say too, last week we had more downloads. I don't want to talk numbers, but we had more downloads last week. Like, where where the hell did that come from? We had probably four x the amount of normal downloads. Yeah. Yeah, about that. So. If you shared our shit, thanks. Thank you. <laughs> we can't. I know. I remember I logged in to check, and I'm like, "Whoa, what happened?" <laughs> yeah, because we don't get any analytics except for the amount of downloads. But yep. uh, and a download is just when you click it and listen. So I mean, it could have been a bunch of people that listened for five seconds. True. But still, felt good to see that number. It did. And also, too, I guess this is a weird thing to say at the end of the episode. If you're on Spotify, uh, they've been throwing ads in and we get like four cents on that, but it's better than nothing. We, we don't really have a lot of control over those ads. So like, I know some are coming across even in Spanish, <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> just skip ahead. <laughs> just know that we're trying to collect 10 cents for that. Uh, and, uh, well, and one more shameless plug here then too. We haven't really mentioned this in a very long time. If you guys could leave us a review, for the yeah. podcast that really does help us out too. like just to get yeah. a awareness out there and like the the reviews help our like podcast kind of get broadcast a little more if we get enough good reviews so if you like it too. yeah if you like it on spotify you don't even have to write anything you just click the yeah. appropriate amount of stars that you feel we deserve five <laughs> just just click the five stars just make it easy just make the all right, dude. Let's get out of here. All right. Hop in the Discord <laughs> if you want. Uh, two, we're in there for a cup of coffee a month. You can really help us uh, yep. keep these servers going and things like that and keep these Zoom that they hit us with. And uh, tell a friend about the podcast, too. That's also – this is a word-of-mouth business, so uh, we love you. All right? Jay? Cool. Good night. That's all I got. That's all I, I, thought you're hitting, I thought you're hitting the record button. I'm in stop. <laughs> okay. I hit the record button. Thank God I'm going to hit stop right.